Let, let's start a campaign. Um, yesterday I started another campaign as this show has become synonymous with campaigns that work, that try to impact you positively. I've been asking the question as to why Trotro have been asked to practice social distancing, as to why taxis have been asked to practice social distancing. Those who ride motorbikes that have seats for two have been asked to just use one man, one seat. And why big coaches and intercity buses are still packing all their buses fully, including those that belong to the state. There's a metro mass. Um, I've seen Ayalulu as well. It's all packed. The numbers I'm sure you've seen is shooting up. The numbers are shooting up. People are dying. People are getting into a critical condition. Our health system is being overwhelmed at this point. Even our frontline health workers are dying. And look at it. The bus is full. It's choked. Most of them are not even wearing face masks as, as, as of what we checked on the 15th of June. You can clearly see it. So if we're a country that says we're serious at fighting a virus that we don't understand has become a global pandemic, this is not how we do it. If we can force the trotro drivers, we can force the taxi drivers, the motorbikers, and yet they are losing money and the state doesn't want to break his back, even though we have been told we are not in normal times. This is not good. Mr. President, you promised us and told us that we are not in normal times and you know how to bring back the economy, but not their lives. These lives are important, Mr. President. These lives are important, Mr. Vice President. These lives are important, Mr. Minister for Transport, Honorable Esiama. Look at it in your shot. In the Republic of Ghana, we made a rule to practice social distancing. So what's the sense in practicing social distancing on the ground before we board the bus? And when we board the bus, everything returns to normal. Look at it. Look at it. Take a look at it. And it's not just the Metro Mass. It's not just Ayalolo, VVIP, all of them. Nobody practices social distancing. So if the trotters are losing, we're pressing GPR to you to do it. If we're pressing Pro Tour, whatever I want to do it, why can't the buses do it? That's my little tea for this morning. And uh, we're back. We will tell you what's on the front pages and then we'll start the conversation. But I am passionate about this. I don't know what you think. Let me know. Daily Graphic this morning says 26 hotspots identified MPP parliamentary primaries and local uh, legal counsel cracks the whip on 10 law faculties. Most of them, we are told, do not have the requisite capacity in terms of their uh, teach, teaching abilities and the libraries and reference points and mentoring other faculties. So they've been asked to do uh, some checks or uh, the consequence that will befall them. They Only they can feel it. First, um, 1 million Ghana cities earmarked for 2020 presidential pitch. NDC signs peace document. And also on the back page, um, COVID-19 dampens remittance inflows. One billion remitted in first quarter. COVID-19 presents opportunity to review Labor Act, according to a legal expert. The Ghanaian Times, government launches one million Ghana City's presidential pitch to provide capital for young entrepreneurs. President Akufuado to launch collaborative education project. COVID-19, government to supply SHSs with special... Uh, cellular phones. NI detects 32,752 double registration uh, in ongoing Ghana card registration. Ghana's COVID-19 cases hit uh, 12,590, 66 death and 4,401 recoveries there on the front page of the daily uh, the Ghanaian Times. On the back page, Ashanti region faces shortage of beds, PPEs at treatment centers. Six million shopping center project for WA in the pipeline. And the BNFT this morning is reporting that one million Ghana cities fund set aside for entrepreneurs. MPRA working to resolve um, unions raging concerns. Confident engagement with contributors will put pensions on sound footing. Economy escapes contraction in Q1 despite COVID-19 scare. Analysts say it's too early to rejoice. And, uh, well, on the back page there, we will talk about Ecobank that's receiving Green Climate Fund accreditation. And the business finder this morning is reporting that 10 startups to share uh, 1 million Ghana cities in presidential business pitch season three. Uh, Dr. Wall is Minister for Business Development. Ecobank Ghana receives Green Climate Fund accreditation. Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority secures consultants for Port of Kita Feasibility Study. And those are the details we have here. If you missed our earlier campaign that we spoke about, maybe I just push the visuals to you now. I'm talking about social distancing everywhere, and it should not end just on the ground. 
It should not just be in our truck trucks and in our taxis and our motorbikes. Every state transport uh, organization should abide by it. Every private intercity transport organization should abide by it as well. And you should be concerned about it because you may not know who's traveled from where, who's been bumped up and packed up and padded up in any of these uh, buses, who comes to visit you and comes to transmit the virus. Mind you, over 90% of the people who have the virus are not showing symptoms. So we all need to be careful. And Mr. President, this is a passionate appeal to you this morning. I beg you in the name of God, do something about this, sir. Good morning. My guest, the Honorable Dr. Clementa Park is the MP for Bursa South. And also, uh, Mr. Richard Nyama is here on the ticket of the NPP. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? Thank you. Good morning. I don't know if you'd want to have a bite on this uh, campaign that I started yesterday. I think it's fair. <coughs> it's fair that we have a bite. <coughs> Well, let me say good morning to you, Johnny, and uh, Richard here has been uh, a long time. Chief. And I must say, a, a much younger vandal, you know, so, uh, a senior vandal versus a junior vandal. He's, he's, he's acknowledged that you are chief. No, no, so he knows. Okay. As yes. soon as he entered and he saw me, he's he a had chief, to. Chief, 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 chief. It chief. is our tradition. And, uh, that, that, that is timeless. In any case, uh, let me say good morning yes, to sir. So Luke. viewers. Uh, so Luke. 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 Uh, is worthy of support uh, because you are not campaigning just for your own interest. You are campaigning in the public interest. And I say so because our survival is at stake. I mean, as a species, regardless of whatever we want to say, this pandemic, this virus that we are confronted with is new in as far as we are concerned. And as you said earlier on in your preamble, we don't fully understand mm -hmm. the nature of the virus, the way it mutates, even how people get infected. So the very basic things that we need to do to protect ourselves and to protect others mm -hmm. is to conform to the protocols that we all know, you know, have the capacity to protect us. Mm -hmm. So when you have persons refusing to abide by basic protocols like wearing a nose mask, mm -hmm which is what you saw and, and, and you showed it in the video, mm. particularly within the context of a publicly owned transport system. Mm. And as you said, the couches in general, mm. uh, it gives room to worry because we all know how this is transmitted. Mm -hmm. We know we have different constitutions in, in terms of our physiology, mm. in terms of our health, but we know that the virus is transmitted by human beings to human beings. Mm. And the virus is in the particles mm. that come out of our breath, either mm. through the nose or through the mouth. Mm. And that is why covering our nose and our mouths with the face mask mm. is very important. Because even if you were to touch a surface mm -hmm. which had it, the likelihood mm. that you will touch your mouth or your nose naturally mm. is there. Maybe in your eyes. Exactly. Mm. And so by covering your nose, you are not just protecting yourself from breathing it out or breathing it in, mm -hmm. but you are also protecting yourself from getting it should you touch a surface mm -hmm. that has it. So I think that we must all make a conscious effort mm -hmm. to abide by the protocols because the numbers are simply alarming. And if the trend that we are seeing mm -hmm. continues with this attitude, then God save this country. Oh, uh, Richard, yes. so at the bus terminal, uh, the ones that I visited, for example, there are Veronica buckets positioned and we stand in queues, socially distanced. We wash our hands, they insist. But when we get onto the bus, the bus is packed. There's no social distancing in the park. Most people don't wear their mask. I am worried about it. I don't know if you're worried as well. Uh, good morning to your viewers. Everybody should be worried. Uh, this disease can only be fought by us individuals. Mm -hmm. The government would aid us by giving us the uh, various protocols mm -hmm. that uh, we need to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, generally supervise us mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, we don't contract this. But it's largely down to as individuals and our attitudes. Mm -hmm. This thing 
if we defeat it, mm -hmm. will come from our individual attitudes and awareness to the reality of it. But, but in this case, <laughs> Richard, sorry. Mm -hmm. In this case, for example, you are getting on a bus. Yes. And the bus, even, even though you want to practice social distancing, that's your only means of transport outside the city. The bus says, I am parking everybody in No, there. I will come to Forget that. Forget about I will come to the bus. I will time. come to the bus. Mm. But generally, mm. it looks like we have this attitude towards the thing that is not real. Yeah, the discipline okay. is yes. not there. Mm. Uh, look, it got to a point where uh, uh, Honorable Bagman was actually even suggesting that we put dead bodies on screen for mm. people to see mm. how serious it is because that is the extent to which the disbelief or unbelief is mm. in the system. Mm. But <laughs> seriously, I have seen videos when this thing started mm. of bodies packed, mm -hmm. even in the US. Mm -hmm. And I was disgusted to see that because I thought that even in death they should be treated with some dignity. Dignity, right. So if that is what we want to see before we believe that this thing is real, and then it's unfortunate. It tells me that no matter what the government does, mm. we as individuals will fail to take responsibility and will end up spreading this and possibly increasing the uh, uh, death rate. That is, for me, the most important thing. Mm. Let's take individual personal responsibility. Mm. Then you come to the government aspect. And that is where I have a problem with enforcement. Mm. The president was clear. And you would expect that the police service would have deployed to these particular places Mm. Ensure that everybody getting on the mm. bus is wearing mm. a mask mm. and they are social distancing. If not, what is the point of the president making those statements? Right. You expect him to come and climb each and every bus and do this? I saw in, so, the, wake, in the wake when the president asked that one man, one motorbike uh, around the Tudu area, uh, no, Kimbu area rather. And they'll be doing they, it right in front yes, of the police. So they arrested them. I, mean, okay. the, I remember the first two, three days, the MTTD were out there arresting people. I don't see them anymore. I see people riding bikes, two people on a bike, no mask, no helmet. It is down to enforcement so now. So nine day wonder. And it's and down it. to enforcement now. And I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but our enforcement agencies aren't helping. Look, why are we calling you two uh, frontline uh, 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 workers? Mm. Because you, though, are not dispensing the service directly, mm. you are there enforcing the law, to and it. the mm. likelihood of you coming into contact with us mm. is higher. Mm -hmm. And that is why uh, 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 you are called frontline workers. Mm. You have been given all the, the, the legal mm. uh, 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 backing mm. under the laws to enforce, and they still stand by the road to uh, uh, check other stuff. When our attention should so uh, totally be on COVID at this point in time, why aren't they deploying? In the beginning, you could see them at checkpoints. Now that the president has spoken and said that I want every uh, body has to be in a, a, a mask, yeah. you would expect the police would actually be out there checking it. I don't see it anywhere. Mm -hmm. So what is going on? <sighs> Johnny, the, okay. the, other, the other thing well, I uh, let me Let me ask you. Uh, so, sorry, mm. but Richard, you didn't take a bite on state transport no, tra state transport state transport organizations no. clearly flouting no, no but you see that, that, and, that, and that, that breaks my heart Johnny, but that is where the law enforcement is if you're a state transport uh, organization mm. you see they they have been under quarantine for a long while right okay so they uh, they've seen a window of opportunity and all of a sudden they want to cramp up and make uh, uh, the best they can but if the enforcement agent, mm. that is the police, is there and says that, okay, uh, you would have to be two meters apart in this bus, mm. else the bus is not moving. Yes. That person mm. has been empowered. Enforcement. And that is what it comes down to. Mm. If, so when I was talking about the police, I wasn't just talking about this standing by the street side okay. and stopping mm. us if we are not wearing masks. Getting into the station. Getting, and yes. Everywhere. There are some, look. Most government agencies, departments, and mm, ministries, mm. when you go, that I can uh, uh, state for mm. a fact, they, these protocols are being observed. I, I agree. Yes. I agree. 
But those others, others that are providing these social services, mm. that are not following them, it even tells you that there is very little, your work has been cut out for you. You can easily identify, uh, we have very few uh, mass transportation systems yeah, in right, this country. Right. And you should be able to easily deploy to them yeah. to ensure social distancing, yeah. hand sanitizing, mm. wearing face masks. Mm. And the, there are about three, four main things you should look out for. I don't, it doesn't take rocket science to do this. Oh. But our consistently, mm. our security agencies don't help. It's like uh, the instruction is given and somebody has to come out from there and come and implement it. Oh, Doc. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, you are not properly motivated. Other than well, that, well, it, it is, what, it is what difficult. You are your, 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 your job. Well, that is your well, job. You, you have described them as uh, frontline. Do we know the specific arrangements? Oh, but I, I, I think, no, when the, so, when the initial mm. uh, uh, announcements were made, yes, I think um, the, the president mentioned. Mm. And some uh, uh, things went into, them, uh, into their uh, uh, area as well. Well, but yes. it's good you have raised it. But I've made a general observation. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is me. Mm. It looks as though we were a lot more concerned and serious and scared mm. during the onset mm. of this virus. That's true. Compared to now. That's true. And, and I find it very strange. I, because I, I, I'm now saying we that have larger numbers. Mm -hmm. It is now that we should even be more worried. I'm yes. saying that we should, change, we, have, we should change the hashtag. Had, uh, less, we should change the numbers. hashtag from spread calm not fear to something else that, and, will, and, and, that will get and, the people... And, because people and seem to be calm. That is it. And have you also noticed that, to me, mm. the public educational component mm -hmm. also seems to have dwindled. I mean, we should be hearing... It looks like we're all going to business. The jingles, exactly. the announcements, mm. and all of that on local radio, on national radio, in the local languages. Are these happening? And what is the role of the NCCE in this as well? Well, I'm happy to announce to you that uh, since uh, I started the advocacy for them, they've gotten some 2.17 million Very well. uh, Ghana cities um, as of last week. Mm -hmm. And some 50 Isuzu vehicles have been loaned to them for three months. Well, let's see them yes, at work. So, so Richard, this is an announcement to you. We, 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 oh, need, we need on, to tackle you, this And thing. when you started it, I was, you, I, was, I was backing you. And it's, 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 I'm happy you've yeah. gotten results. Yeah. So this one must but, get results too. But for me, mm. seriously... Uh, you see, globally, mm. there's a trend, and it looks like the disease has come to stay and is going to wreak havoc. Mm. Globally, now we are somewhere 8 million. That's correct. Yes. Mm. 8 million. When uh, just three months ago, mm. uh, the whole globe was looking at about 300,000 and was doing within that mm. period. 100,000 a month. Mm. Now, globally, it is 100,000 a day. Give it another three months, and these numbers could double. Mm. What are we doing long term? Okay. Uh, to, to, because, seriously, they, they, there are people who are dying silently. Uh, this morning I was listening mm -hmm. uh, to uh, when I was, I was following BBC. And it looks like it's, it's a global thing. Mm -hmm. Nobody is able to give an accurate uh, count. Mm -hmm. They give examples of Spain, France, England, uh, uh, I think uh, Ecuador, where the numbers being mm -hmm. actually accounted for are about... A, mm. a, 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 a one third, oh no, a, a, a third of what is actually happening out there. Mm. Okay, and so we 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 might be underestimating the impact, though right. it's even gory mm. what we currently are seeing. And okay. we need to step up our game. I I also think, and uh, one of my bosses uh, says that well, the transport institutions must be responsible too. We can't heap all the blame on. Uh, what do you call it, the security agencies, the transport agencies must show responsibility. No, no, transport. I agree. I made that they point. They must show responsibility. And he added on yeah. 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 the yes. security They, they must show responsibility. Yes. No, my yes. point was that they But if they are not, do you arrest them? Yeah. That they need to point. be responsible. Yes. Yeah. Because, because there's the EI. They, so, they know, mm -hmm. and they yes. should know better. Yeah. And as you said earlier on, mm -hmm. if we can compel mm -hmm. motor riders and normal trucks and taxis to go according to the directive, these institutions that you mentioned, mm. these are even much more established. Right. 
and well structured. So what is the difficulty? I mean, you just said that you take the airlines. Mm -hmm. I've realized they, 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 they are also socially distancing. They, they are socially and distancing. even they, they lose more. They, yeah, that is the whole point. Uh, a flight that would normally take about 50 mm -hmm. is doing half capacity yeah. to just ensure that no two people are sitting by each other. If yeah. you find any two sitting by each other, they are either family or they bought it together or they are moving together. That's right. That is the only yeah. situation under which they will allow you to sit together. together. But, but yet, personal responsibility. Yes. Yeah. Shouldn't the, the citizens, the passengers, the be able to raise some of no, these it, issues? What is, no, they, they should. Fully well. that, that was my argument that, look, personal yeah. responsibility. But, but see, if you, when you get there and mm. you raise hell, yeah, people you normally should. are afraid. It is your right to raise one, the point. one race is hell. The others would, under these COVID conditions, we are not sitting in this bus mm -hmm. this way. Yeah. You have to socially distance. You mm -hmm. may have to bring more buses. And they would respond. Okay. But our natural, timid Ghanaian attitude <laughs> would let it go. Yeah, well, no, no, no Commonwealth boys. Uh, uh, no, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> okay. the train let's, we'll let's, know, let's know what you think about uh, of this. And, and we're hoping that this will raise some uh, eyebrows at the presidency and get some attention uh, very shortly. Uh, the police high command as well. And everybody who is supposed to ensure that this is done, please do it. But, Doc, schools are very open. I know that you are a ranking member of the Education Committee in Parliament. Um, are you satisfied with the arrangements that have been done? Universities have been opened now. Next week or so, the uh, JHS and SHS uh, folks will go, final year students. Are you happy with the arrangements so far? Well, I can't say I am happy with the arrangement uh, because I am yet to get a uh, proper briefing about uh, the plans and uh, programs that the how, ministry how, and how GES do you, do you have put in place. Well, we, we have heard, you know, the minister and GES mm. uh, make announcements after consultations with uh, stakeholders, including the teacher unions. Mm. But as a member of parliament and a deputy ranking member on the committee, mm. we have not been given any briefing. I haven't seen any document mm. outlining exactly what is to be done and how it is going to be done, mm -hmm. which would then allow me to proffer an assessment mm. of whether... Mm. I am happy or not. Okay. But be as it may. So, if I get you clearly, the whole plan from the GES ministry has not come to parliament. No. Your not, committee does not know no, about it. No, it hasn't happened. If it is yet to come, we are waiting for it. But, but the it schools have reopened. So, well, it, it's not too late. Have if, you asked? If it, if, well, I, I haven't. But I, I would assume that in these times, uh, it would be good for all of us as stakeholders to be on board. Uh, I would have expected that at least we should have been formally mm. apprised about uh, what has been put uh, in place. But be as, be as it may, we continue to hope that what we have heard government say uh, that it is going to do mm -hmm. to ensure that the reopening of school for uh, university students and the final year students preparing for BEC mm -hmm. and WASI uh, are just that. Uh, so we want to see the PPs, we want to see the Veronica buckets, we want to have evidence that there is running water mm. uh, and that indeed the class sizes mm. are definitely not going to be the way they were mm. uh, before, before COVID. You know, another issue that has come up uh, has been the request by some of the teacher unions mm -hmm. for uh, the state or government to test mm. uh, students and uh, instructors and in fact, if you like, all of those who would be in that enclave mm. to make sure that people don't come from their areas of abode or mm -hmm. their homes mm -hmm. with the illness mm -hmm. to the campuses. Because we all know, we've seen examples in other parts of the world where in Israel, for instance, schools were reopened and they had to be shut down. We've had similar stories mm -hmm. uh, in, in Germany. Germany. We've Germany. had similar yeah. stories in Korea. Korea as well. Mm -hmm. So... You know, I even read a, a New York Times article mm. which uh, actually says that to think that you can reopen school and keep the kids away from each other is a joke. Why is it? Because we, we all know. I mean, you if, even look at the university. You can imagine. And then you bring it to a lower tier. But be as it may, we are confronted with a, a situation and uh, we are doing our best as a, as a, as a global society mm. uh, to try and go on with the necessities of life. Mm. Whilst at the same time, you know, being cognizant and conscious 
of the illness. So we would see the schools have reopened. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, we will start getting reports. Uh, but for the secondary schools, for example, the information I picked up only yesterday was that some of them are now being fumigated. Right. And many of them have not yet received the PPEs yet. Mm. So if they are to reopen, let's hope that these supplies mm. would be available before the students actually get on campus. Mm. But we still have challenges regarding the decision to keep, I do have a challenge, mm. to keep parents from seeing the awards. Okay. I mean, you know that when the minister spoke, that was mm. one of the... The right. issues that this came morning up. I heard that they will be provided with phones so they can communicate with their parents. So that means we are now going to make it legal for students in the senior high school system to have phones. Not well, bad. We're, we're not you don't hear that. We're too. not in normal times. So <laughs> That's what I'm have, saying. So we are adjusting. They have a small yam that they can use. Yeah. Well, that that phones. that that is an adjustment, as mm. you said. Right. But there, there's still a, a reasonable level of discomfort mm. to say that parents should not be allowed to see the awards. Mm. Are you saying that those? masters and teachers and non-teaching staff who live off campus once they leave they can't come back so what would be the the rationale for saying that parents should not be allowed to to, mm. to visit to see the awards so it's a very delicate situation that we are dealing with I, I, but the I, emphasis I, mm. must be placed on the availability of adequate supplies okay regularly mm. okay. because give or take they will be in school for probably about 11 or so weeks yes yeah. Yes, about, three months, about 12, 12 exactly. weeks. Exactly, that, that is, that is a reasonably long time. Mm. So are we prepared, are we, you know, procured? Are we going to supply? Is it going to be regular? Mm. Or is it going to be the usual, initial, you know, media blitz of okay. we are given these quantities and mm. then after that, people relax. Okay. And to the extent that even some mm. medical facilities are still complaining today about inadequate PPAs, that worries me greatly because if they are still complaining now, then you can only imagine what could be happening at the secondary school. I, I've, when that I've uh, monitored some of the universities that are opened now. Um, even though we're told that the PPEs will be there when they come on the 15th, they, they are still getting the supplies. So I know that for most of the universities, each student has now two face masks. They have sanitizers and things that they use. The schools have been fumigated. That's one leg of it. So your concern is genuine. But then somebody proposed, for example, and I'll, I'll come to you, uh, Richard, shortly. Somebody proposed that. Can we allow parents to visit by, if you like, we know what the, the numbers of final year students are. So a class of maybe 30 or a final year school of maybe 100 students. We can divide them so that parents can visit them in batches. So week one, Parents of students 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 15 come and visit. Mm -hmm. We observe social distancing in the visiting area. Then two weeks after, or the next week, the next set come to visit. Can we think about that? Well, we have to be innovative. I mean, as you said earlier, and we all agree, these are not normal times. Mm. So whatever strategy or whatever methods we can deploy uh, to survive mm. in this uh, era of uh, you know, a, a, a global pandemic, uh, mm -hmm. we would have to. Uh, well, that is why we are homo sapiens. Uh, mm -hmm. Now I have to go back to my anthropology. <laughs> you know, we, homo sapiens sapien, that is our, our anthropological name, which Absolutely. means wise, wise man. Right. So we, we have the capacity mm -hmm. as God has endowed us with to be able to find ways to resolve mm -hmm. challenges. So if this is going to be a method that, you know, will be feasible, mm -hmm. I don't see why not. But I think okay. the total blackout mm. would not be the best thing to do because okay. parents have every reason to be anxious of the awards, especially in this mm. time. Richard, take a bite on this one. The children are back in school. Doc is worried about the constant supply of PPEs. And um, even though we've been told that the virus will be here, we have to live with it or learn to live with it. Parents are still worried. Some are even contemplating, should I allow my child to go back to school? I don't know what you think. Uh, would you? I, I want to... Uh, start with uh, the point in Parliament. Mm. You know, um, I'm I'm surprised that uh, it, uh, it's not come to <laughs> to, 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 to the mm. committee level for them to uh, uh, digest it and make their own inputs. And I would suggest, Doc, uh, 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 at least 
mm. a request for it because uh, for me these are not normal times mm. and you uh, these are very bold decisions and steps mm. it's like we're taking baby steps back into uh, I, I would say it's like um, you got into an accident mm -hmm. and for like a, a, a three four months you couldn't walk mm -hmm. and you're now taking baby steps back mm -hmm. into the real world and learn to walk and all that and mm -hmm. become yourself mm -hmm. Uh, we will need all the support right. and the decisions would have to, to a large extent, mm. be unanimous. And we need everyone's uh, brain, uh, we need to tap into everybody at this point. And I think that, like he said, it's not too late because mm. the process is still, still ongoing. ongoing. So uh, they need to take it to Parliament. To, yes, we need, to, we need to get their, their, their input at that committee level and mm. let us, because the, the, you, one or two things might slip you buy mm -hmm. that somebody brings on board and you're like how how come i didn't, think, I didn't about think about this and we need to do that um on the reopening mm -hmm. the suggestion about parents uh, the suggestion by g uh, mm -hmm. the, the teacher unions mm -hmm. for uh testing mm -hmm. i think it's a laudable idea if we have the capacity mm -hmm. we should seriously consider it but the health economists say it, it doesn't make meaning because our resources are limited so that is you no, can't throw everything no, I, 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 mm. I made I, I made a, I passed a caveat that if we have the resources the resources okay. and the capacity mm. because this thing you look at it globally everybody is is, is somehow under resourced to deal with it if we could mm -hmm. it would have been a brilliant idea to do that because mm. then you know everyone's status and you're able to deal with it. If mm -hmm. the person has to then stay home and be giving uh, virtual lessons mm -hmm. to write their exams, then we could have done that. But if we don't have that capacity, mm -hmm. uh, it means that the protocols have to be strictly observed. Mm -hmm. And under student uh, 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 and, uh, school, and school environment, mm -hmm. it is it's very doable. I know when they get into school and mm. their house masters and those people take charge mm. and ensure that they are inspected and they are observing social distancing, washing their hands, mm. it will be good. Fortunately, we're doing it in badges. Mm. These ba this particular badge need to prepare for the examination. Right. Unless we are ready to skip a whole year of academic work mm. that, okay, next year, the, this, they come and join and write the exam. There's a vacuum. No, but that's what some of our sister nations uh, are doing. Yes. Some of them have yes. just chosen to Yes. Learn. So, the, you see, uh, there, this, are options, there are options on the table. Mm -hmm. But if we decide that we're taking this option where we want to test them so that the academic calendar can continue, progress, yeah. we need to be on top of our protocols. And the, the challenge and is that persists in the schools. I mean, some schools don't have water, for example. Um, we, we have done stories on TV3 Mission where students have had to walk miles to go and fetch water from a river or a stream. My understanding mm -hmm. is that those particular issues should be dealt with with uh, water tankers and all those uh, 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 delivery trucks okay. providing. That's, that's a promise. Yes. The, the fulfillment so of the promise is, is another thing. You see, no, you see, uh, for me, and that is why we are all doing this, I'm sure being responsible the way you are and mm -hmm. have been over the period, you take your cameras to those particular places. Mm. Before the schools even open, we are aware which schools or areas, localities don't have water. Mm. So I expect that your original correspondence would at least go to one or two of those places and give you a but report. We will, we will do it. Yes, on, mm. the, on the day that, okay, the students have come, mm. they have no access to water, blah, blah, blah. It then highlights it. In the end, uh, it helps us all solve the problem. But it defeats the, the purpose of ensuring that people wash their hands because every step of the way the health officials have told us that you must wash your hands at least 25 times a day so now if the students get to school and we go and report and bring it on that first day second day would have been missed no and no, that no you're, could not, be you're, dangerous. Not, you're not you're not getting my point mm. i'm saying that right now the preparations are ongoing right you have discovered that the ppes have been delivered but they are not enough. Right. It's because you have followed the trend. Exactly. So I'm saying that mm. on the day 
at least add it to their uh, 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 this thing for that day, their work schedule for that mm. day. That give us a few schools that you know in your region mm. or district do not, under normal circumstances, have water. You're taking the job of my assignment editor. <laughs> oh, okay. so, 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 on that day, they give you a reportage. Okay. You know, we cannot, we are humans, mm. though, obviously, in the end, be some uh, 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 fallibility mm. you might get one or two of them but in the end if they report that a uh, majority of them have had it resolved then mm. you know there's a commitment to do it right but maybe one or two have not yet been done okay but for me mm. the R most me, the please. most mm. the most uh, difficult thing about all this is mm. that let's not kid ourselves once the kids are coming to school mm would end up having one or two outbreaks. The most, what, what for me uh, counts me mm. is that overall, when you look at the demographics, mm. okay, for instance, yesterday it was shown that of ages, between, uh, ages 19 and down, 80% mm. of those who contract it are symptomatic in the end. Mm. You know, they don't even know they are carrying it, let alone it being uh, harmful mm. to mm. them. Mm. Asymptomatic. But, yes. Mm. But in the end, once we choose to come back, there will be some infections. And that is where mm. I disagree with the parents. Not visiting. No, rather visiting. Visiting, okay. Yes, because they are in a larger society. Mm. And the likelihood is that they are more exposed mm. once these kids are virtually quarantined. And then you yeah, are but coming Richard, from, the kids but, are coming from home to school. Oh, yes. <laughs> but you see, the kids... So they not, have no, but the kids already. naturally have a, a higher uh, immunity but, but you see, Richard, against also, it. Also, I mean, for, for those who, who attended boarding schools, we know that there are pantry hands that do not live on campus. They go... It's not just pantry hands. Teachers and all yeah, those. Yes, so we, we need to... We need non teaching to, staff who go out yeah, So mm. those are the questions we need to uh, look at. Mm. Uh, for this period, do we ensure that all the teaching staff and non-teaching staff are uh, mm. uh, uh, boarded in mm. the schools? Mm. How do we... Yeah, no, there yeah. are legitimate questions right. we have to look at. We are but boarding, we are boarding the students, so we should be able to... No, but, yes. but let me if every uh, we, to we, we need to, take, we need to touch on a very yeah. final Another topic. point mm. that we, we should also Quick, be quickly. advocating. I'll, I'll give you, you know, just a minute. every mm. secondary school is always supposed to have a dispensary. Yes. Right. And a nest attached yes. to right. that dispensary. Yes. Right. Let's see... Let's activate that all of that. Because this is the time that that would also be needed. Okay. So that is a very important point. The Sigbe in the school. It's very important. very important. We should also add the, the guidance and counseling unit. We only see it on paper. Mm. Because at this time, the children will be traumatized. So yeah. the guidance and counseling units should be up and doing. So, uh, Professor Mankwa, good morning to you. We, we want to see action from your your end at uh, the GES. But let's look at this uh, final one. The NDCA yesterday signed the Code of Conduct and Roadmap to Ending Political Vigilantism with a call on the National Peace Council to take steps to eliminate the scourge of vigilantism in the country. The National Chairman of the NDC, Mr. Samuel Ofoswam Pofu, and General Secretary, Mr. Johnson Asidun Ketia, yesterday, uh, while signing the document in the presence of the uh, NPC boss, the National Peace Council boss, Reverend Professor Emmanuel Asante, the short ceremony had indicated that they were committed to the, the uh, roadmap, but they expected the Peace Council to strictly adhere to it. Come, uh, uh, Doc, I remember that earlier when President Kofuado gave the directive and even put an ultimatum to it, which ultimatum both parties failed to achieve, which is why they brought in the vigilantism law, which is now in full force. You had issues. Your issues were that there were 22 uh, signees and only about four had signed and they were pressing you to sign, even though the MPP had signed. What changed? Have all the signees appended their signatures, which would give you the impetus to sign? Obviously, the dynamics have changed. If what not, dynamics uh, are we those? We would not uh, have signed. What dynamics are those? Uh, as uh, you rightly pointed out, mm. we had uh, reservations because we felt that uh, this uh, you know, issue was mm. not just confined to even just the political parties. Mm. Uh, you know, it is a matter that concerns uh, all of us and different stakeholders mm. and the rules and responsibilities mm. uh, that ought to be executed. And therefore, it was important that they also appended uh, the, their signatures. Mm. 
Uh, we have done this because we are a national party. Mm -hmm. We have also governed this country before. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a very high likelihood that we will govern this country again. Mm -hmm. And therefore, anything and any phenomena mm -hmm. that has the capacity mm -hmm. to uh, be disruptive, mm -hmm. in as far as our democratic dispensation is concerned, mm -hmm. uh, cannot be a phenomena that should be entertained, uh, grown, encouraged, mm -hmm. and countenanced. Uh, but as uh, the leadership of uh, my party indicated, mm -hmm. it's about enforcement and ensuring that what we have all agreed upon mm -hmm. is done with a few of favor. You know, we all agree, but let's see the way it is operationalized. That would mean that both parties must disband their vigilantes. Exactly my point. Are you ready to do that? Well, as far as I know, I don't know of an NDC vigilante group. What, what, you, what are if those? If you know, you, you what, can what, tell what, me. What is the Azoka boys? Is there a party, what, Bushes or uh, what, what are they? I, I don't know that Azoka has boys. Okay. If you know, you can tell me. Are you, are you, tell, the, are you telling me and, that you are and, not aware? And, and did you ever hear that the Azoka boys, boys, the Azoka Azoka boys, boys were, were a wing of the NDC? Or, are you, are you, I mean, are you why, denying why them? Are you why denying are them? to link a group mm. to an entity? There has to be evidence. We know mm. where group members have come out, where party officials have come out to own groups. That is different from Azoka boys. Maybe I have a pack boys. Mm. I mean, if I have a pack boys who come to help me uh, build my kusum in, in Dolinga, for example, mm. is, is that akin to vigilantism? But we know. I mean, if you want us to go back and rehash that debate, mm. we know of the invisible forces, we know of the delta forces, we know they are public the, posturing. The, we the, have party, heard comments the parties, the MPP, of, for example, says that these are not in our party. Yeah, but we, we have MPP officials who have owned them in their personal capacity. Where people have even made threats to the extent that if some of these boys were not rewarded, if they were not given jobs, there will be consequences for the MPP. We even saw a video. You know, mm. a public forum in Tema, where some of these guys went and hijacked the program and made demands. Even some made threats. Mm. So, <laughs> if we want to deal with this issue, the onus lies on those who now have the power of state to make sure that this that we have all signed upon mm. is given effect. Because if that doesn't happen, then at the end of the day, this exercise will be in futility. So the point is that mm -hmm. we have done that, signing, believing, hoping, and expecting that the Peace Council would ensure that it is given effect. The, the Peace Council says they will not be quiet uh, as far as enforcing this is concerned, but then they will need your help. And in needing your help, it means that you must lay down your tools if really are, we're calling for a truce. Now you are saying that your party has nothing of the sort related to, uh, what do you call it, vigilantism. It becomes a difficult one then. So you are expecting the MPP to lay down and set aside every group. But in your instance, you say you've never had a group. Well, that. in that case, How do we is, reach an it agreement? is a peace council's standard mm. that will be used. Obviously, I have not read the, uh, uh, I mean, the entire uh, document. Right. But I'm sure that there are some page document. Mm. There is a standard that has been set. Mm. And I think the mere fact that the NDC has also appended its signature indicates that the NDC accepts mm. the standard that the Peace Council has set in as far as this issue is concerned. Okay. And if, therefore, uh, there are groups mm. that fall within that category or uh, by their standard mm. can be classified, I am sure that the needed actions uh, will be taken. Okay. But by appending the signature, mm. it means that we agree. Okay. And the issue is now the enforcement and giving effect to what we have all agreed upon. Okay, Richard, uh, the NDC's chairman of Usampa for yesterday, there's a quote uh, in the Daily Graphic, says, we are prepared to go the full hog with the roadmap and the peace accord, uh, but we have indicated in our signing of the 22 key deliverables set out by the Peace Council under the Code of Conduct and the Peace Accord that the political parties can only enforce four. The remaining 18 are enforceable by government, and so it will be uh, it will take the commitment on the part of government to ensure that we realize the Code of Conduct and the Peace Agreement that we have signed. That puts a burden on you in government. 
18 out of the 22 that the NDC initially had issues with. They have signed, but they say, we can only do four. The 18 is yours to do. Are you prepared? Uh, thank you very much. And uh, let me, I think my senior brother contradicted himself a bit mm. when he went on the tangent that the NDC didn't have mm. uh, any uh, recognizable uh, vigilante group. Mm. Uh, if there is none, then you have no business signing this document because that is the main purpose of the document. Mm. You have appended your signature to do 22 things. Okay. Four and, out of 22. And it, no, you are to do 22 mm. of them. Right. Okay. You are, you are stakeholders. Mm. Okay. Your rule, you have identified amongst yourselves all the political parties where we can only enforce four of them. Mm. The other are left to the government, but you are all stakeholders. Right. For me, it attests to the fact that there's a problem mm. and we are finding a solution to it. Uh, I think as Ghanaians, we, we are too critical of ourselves. Mm. We, have, we have matured and we are maturing. This our democracy is barely uh, 26, 27 years. Mm. I think we've made dying strides. This is one of them. Mm. We are gradually identifying the very rough edges in our politics and we are curving them and mm. taking them away gradually. When we started in uh, 1992, it was very crude. Mm. Uh, but you gradually, we are polishing up. Mm. And seriously, we are the envy of our neighbors. <laughs> and uh, let's... I think occasionally we should motivate ourselves. We is, have is, is the we, we can do better. Yeah. Is the no, we, 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 we have a way to do better. That. No, you see, that is why we are Ghana. Right. Because okay. we are the forebearers. Mm. And we always want to set the standards, standards. Mm. for the rest to follow. And we are doing that. And I'm saying that occasionally we should look back and pat ourselves on the back. That, that means we are that, doing that. That means that the MPP now, is, is ready to disband this vigilante group. Oh, Same the, question I asked no, Dr. Park. Hold, hold on. Uh, the one heading the government, mm. and that I'm taking your question the other way around. I'll come okay. to this point. Mm. The president, who is heading the government, mm -hmm. actually is the one that gave the order. Okay. Okay. With an ultimatum. And yes, even with an ultimatum. So now the burden is on him to ensure that 18 of those are implemented. And I have no doubt in my mind mm. that. That will be done. How do you reconcile? Is, how do you reconcile that, Richard, with um, the NDC's concern that we had the Emil Short Commission, which looked at the IRS West War gone by election. Yes. One of the commissioners now is actually a Supreme Court judge, yes. respected Supreme Court judge. A white paper was issued. Yes. People were on live TV confessing that they act actually abused people. The recommendations of the committee. That's the NDC's mm. concern that none of the people who were found guilty or culpable and were asked to be punished have been punished. And government whitewashed everything. And they cannot trust a government to do a clean job. That's why they want the Peace Council not to keep quiet. How do we reconcile the two? That it was the president that gave the order with the ultimatum, and now we are getting the NDC signing. And then flipping it on the other side with the Emerald Short Commission recommendations okay. that were made that people were left off the All hook. right, so what... What occasioned the order? If I remember, it was the Ayawa Suez War mm. thing and how it played out. Right. That occasioned the president was angry and did what he did, issued those orders. You see, sometimes uh, as a father, you'd also need to uh, be measured. Okay. You are virtually giving everybody a clean slate and mm. saying that from today onwards, mm. this is not acceptable in my mm. household, and this is how we are going to do business going forward. Uh, <laughs> it is subject to interpretation and approach. Which, which interpretation some, do you give to some, it? Some mm. may want punishment and all that along. Others too may want forgiveness and let go. Where do you stand? And reconciliation. Where do you and stand? And then you move on. Where do you stand, Richard? Oh, for me, at this particular moment, looking at what has gone on, mm. I think uh, Ayawa's works were gone, has gone under the bridge. We have put in new standards mm. that 
uh, the same person giving the order would supervise. So let's test his commitment. So Sam George has been slapped for free. Oh, uh, Sam George has been slapped for free as in how? He was slapped. I think under the circumstance, Sam George also has, uh, can take legal redress. Mm. Okay, mm. so there are other options mm. open to us that we can okay. take. If the person uh, feels uh, 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 he's still wrong mm. and is not happy about it, there are other opportunities. Okay. But I'm saying that, mm. look at the uh, uh, institution that has been given the mandate to right. head this, the Peace Council. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes mm -hmm. it comes along that mm. some, they would, uh, they would take an approach in a, a process that Okay, let's reconcile and let's heal and go forward. For me, okay. if that is the approach and we are going with mm. it, it is the subsequent uh, attitude okay. and outcome. I, I need to, I need to, I need to read a few of the messages. Sorry about that. Um, that's, that's that have fine. come in. Uh, so let's, so we can put our viewers also in in the game and uh, make sure that their their views count in this instance. Okay. So your your messages that you have sent in um, says Johnny. Uh, we got the men, indeed, we got the men to disappear with excavators, but no uh, man to dredge the Kuala Lagu. We got the men to identify and arrest critics on social media radio stations, but no man to identify one single 1D1F in the whole of Upper East Region with over 10 districts. We got the men, but a green book has defeated them all. We only have men who slang, but slangs is, uh, equal, is, is slang equal to competence. Roland, I will go being sarcastic there from Boga Central. Morning, Johnny. Why should Ghana Health Service stop mass testing? Are they scared of the increasing numbers? I say COVID. Uh, I dare say that COVID-19 cases could be about double the current figure if mass testing and contact tracing were done effectively. It's clear Ghana Health Service is now working to please government rather than the service to the nation. Uh, Bumekpo from um, Kwanta Uti region. Good morning, TV3. I think the NDC need to be more serious than they are doing. We need constructive criticism, not destructive uh, criticism. Can the NDC give a fair comparison with their four years in office against that of the Akufado-led administration? We are tired of their lies. That was not how Jerry Rawlings uh, handled the previous NDC lesson from Tamale. I still can't understand why the MPP communicators will not understand that when it comes to infrastructure, JM stands tall. The agenda of denigrating him with uh, will be a mirage because the difference is clear. Ghanaians believe in the Holy Green Book. Let's read it religiously as we go into the polls in December. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, Johnny. The MPP promised Ghanaians heaven, but later they presented them with hell. Vice President Mahmoud Baumia said by the end of 2019, all of us will, be, will have bank accounts, not knowing he and his boss are rather going to collapse the banking sector. MPP should know that they uh, are still waiting for our $1 million, one constituency, and now we're expecting $4 million. So God save us from the incompetent uh, government, Ismail Horori Ali. And finally, Ebenezer from Kwabinya World Junction says, if the NI had detected over 30,000 double registration, a cost of worry, and I think there is a cost of worry, and I think the ACs should be very cautious of using the Ghana card as an identity. Uh, everything shows that the government of President Akufuado is destroying the nation gradually by his bad governance. Okay, that's what you think. Thank you very much. But look at the, this one that Tilapia put up. It's a roadmap. It's a roadmap to peace. And on that side, the roadmap, the road has been close to vigilantism and the roadmap to peace. So two gentlemen uh, there in the V8. Uh, I wonder why he chose the V8. Should have chosen a pickup or something. But thank you, uh, <laughs> Chief. Chief Chief Dr. Clement Park is uh, the MP for Bulsa South, and also uh, Richard Nyama is a, a member of the MPP's communication team. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, uh, and uh, we're back after the break with some more. Stay with us. <laughs>